Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked, the series where I talk about every single book on my shelf because the old gods are compelling me to do so. Definitely used that before or in the future. Oh well. For those of you who maybe didn't notice, uh, last week we actually started Overbooked season four. I'm one of the people who didn't notice until I was editing, but hi, welcome. We're now on the fourth shelf of the bookshelves I had in my old house because that's how these seasons work out. It is what it is. Today we are talking about the first three books in a, I believe, quintet. We are talking about Gareth Hanrahan's The Black Iron Legacy series. <laughs> Some quick disclaimers before we start. All three of these were sent to me for free by the publisher. Thank you very much to the people at Orbit. Nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. I'm also gonna keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. I'm not gonna give you context for a lot of the information, but I am gonna be talking about the first three books. So if you would like to go into this series knowing absolutely nothing, I have either a reading vlog or something up for these that may be more spoiler free. I will I will check and I will link it if, if that is the case. But basically to summarize, I really think you should read these. Pause this video, go away, read them. Come back, we'll have a chat about it then. The Black Iron Legacy series started in 2019 with The Gutter Prayer and was followed in 2020 with The Shadow Saint and 2021 with The Broken God. I'm just gonna put one of them behind me because we've seen how many times books fall off these shelves. As far as I'm aware, this is going to be a five book series, which came as a surprise to me when I reached the end of book three. If you remember that reading vlog, you have been here for a while. This series is published certainly in the UK by Orbit Books, and I can't see any further information about the next two books in the series, so we'll see. Gareth Hanrahan, I will link his website below. I also have not checked that I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. It may be completely wrong. If so, I apologise. He's an author. He also creates role-playing games, uh, tabletop stuff. He's based in Ireland, and while he is now a full-time writer, slash creator. His original background is in computer science. This series takes place in the city of Guerdon? Guerdon? Not sure how you pronounce it, but it's a relatively safe-ish city, at least safe from the gods' war happening outside. Gods possess humans, humans wreak havoc, bad things occur. But there's no such thing happening in Guerdon, right? Oh, I should read you the blurb for book one, because that, that'll get you hyped up. Enter a city of saints and thieves. The city of Guerdon stands eternal, a refuge from the war that rages beyond its borders. But in the ancient tunnels deep beneath its streets, a malevolent power has begun to stir. The fate of the city rests in the hands of three thieves. They alone stand against the coming darkness. As conspiracies unfold and secrets are revealed, their friendship will be tested to the limit. If they fail, all will be lost and the streets of Guerdon will run with blood. An epic tale of sorcerers and thieves, treachery and revenge from a remarkable new voice in fantasy. This was a debut, uh, which is why that says that. So in book one, we follow Carrie, who is the one of the young thieves. We follow Spar, who is a boy slowly turning to stone, and Rat, who is a ghoul. And they're all friends, and there is a lot of stuff going on. They get embroiled in a lot more than they were anticipating. There's a heck ton of my favourite stuff in this, as you may be able to tell. I do think that a lot of the descriptions for this book make it seem a lot less spooky. And I don't know why people aren't leaning on that selling point. Like these are wonderfully creepy, claustrophobic books and I, I think they're great for that reason. What I will say is that this is one of those series where we follow different characters in different books with some of the same. So we follow three characters in this first book. The second book we follow fewer characters. Different characters is probably more accurate. I think there's different. I don't know how many there are. Uh, and the third book again we get different perspectives. So you keep building on this world which is one of my favourite things. And I think in hindsight that's probably why I should have realised this was going to be a quintet because how would you fit all of that into three books? My biggest pro, my biggest reason I tell people they should read the series is that I think that the setting is absolutely fantastic. Like both on a micro scale, like these very small places that these characters are, the tunnels under the city, uh, there's subterranean trains at one point, there's temples, there's intimate houses, there's just heaps of different places. And then also to blow that completely out, the whole world is really interesting. This idea of a war that's happening uh, between the gods that humans are getting caught up in. And just this, whole mess that has happened I find really interesting and particularly in the later books where we get to see a bit more of the world and see a bit more of the cities other than Guerdon I just think oh it's really interesting and Guerdon itself as sort of a character of its own becomes even more fascinating and oh book two is especially good for that. There's also really interesting world building in the characters and the kinds of characters we meet so a lot of the people who use magic are very interesting. There are people who are just made of a mass of worms. That's horrifying, but also super interesting. The ghouls are fascinating, Rat and the Ghouls, the stone men like Spa. Oh, just, I could talk about this for ages. And I think in that you can really tell that Gareth Hanran is a game designer, particularly RPGs, because it is sort of creating classes of characters. Like you want to play as, uh, a stone man, so you get the, you know, you get increased strength, but you're also turning to stone. You know, that's 
really fascinating. I've mentioned the series progression. I've mentioned that it goes from uh, quite a, uh, not a small story in terms of scope and stakes, but from a story very much focused in the city to a much bigger story as the books progress. That is one of my absolute favourite things. Um, I really like that way of managing a story. And I think the introduction of new character perspectives really helps with that. And I think that it would be a much worse book series if it didn't do that. It would be very boring to stick with these first three characters. But what I like about this particular story is that we do keep coming back to that first city and a lot of what you see is how that city is impacted by the events of previous books or the current plot that's going on. And I think that having that as a touch point really works. It's similar to in uh, the Age of Madness trilogy. We keep coming back to the Solar Society as kind of like a, okay, this is where this is, this is where, therefore, the world is. That's kind of our litmus test for that. And I think I think that works really well, particularly because there is just so much going on in the city. Like, you really do get the feeling, again, it's that game design thing, that this is a story of some people who are dealing with stuff in this world, and there are heaps of others that you could be telling. Another thing that I, I think is worth mentioning about this is you really do come to care about the characters. In stuff like this, it can be very easy to write quite one-dimensional characters or two-dimensional characters, however dimensions you want to say. Not that many dimensions, uh, because you're in such a cool setting, there's not really time to get to know them, you want to just show that character experiencing the world so that the reader can put themselves in the character's shoes. That often means you don't get a lot out of that character. In this instance, you get heaps out of all of them. I came to care for pretty much everyone, including characters that I wouldn't have expected. And I think that helps with that transition into new characters in later books, is that Gareth Hammerhand writes characters very well, so you know you're gonna to come to either care about them or really, really hate them. And either one of those makes for compelling reading, in my opinion. I will say that at the moment, I think, uh, having read these, I think I've read all of them at least once. I think I've read The Gutter Prayer and Shadow Saint twice. Maybe I've read The Gutter Pair three times. I don't, I don't remember. But having read all of them again, I think that The Gutter Pair at the moment is probably the strongest, so there isn't a complete level playing field across all the books. I don't think I'd ever expect there to be in a series, but it felt like the kind of thing it ought to mention. And also, obviously, of course, this isn't yet a completed series, so we can't talk about like, oh yeah, it really stuck the landing, or ooh, yeah, it really fell off towards the end, but the first three are great. But what I can say is that the first three are great, and I do feel like book three ends well enough that I would be happy to leave it there. And I know there's a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hesitation about starting series that aren't finished. Like people have been very much burned by big fantasy series in the past, naming no names. Mm -hmm. But I think in this case, each book ends so strongly that you could finish one and be like, okay, I'm gonna just assume that stuff happens after that and get on with my life. Like the, the catharsis of an ending is there. It's not hugely cliffhangery, uh, but it's really interesting to step back into that world. My last thing that I will mention is if you are like me and you really struggle with names, people and alliances uh, and keeping those things in your head, this is a book that I really have to stay focused. And if I'm going to read a later book in the series, I know I will want to do a reread and I will want to do that reread back to back. Um, I don't know if that would be different in audiobook format. I've not listened to any of the audiobooks. I don't know. Just to note, this is one of those books where I really had to make an effort more than I do with other things. And I think that's a good thing. With every one of these series I read and absorb, I get a little bit better at retaining my information. So I'm in training. I'm in training to read even beefier fantasy. <laughs> A few recommendations, some other things I think you might like, or if you liked these, you might like this, that that kind of thing. I thought about Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I feel like I've been recommending this a lot lately, but I really enjoyed it, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. It's my channel, I can do what I want. I think the reason this book felt similar to me is this idea of a very complicated city and a lot of different areas within that city and group of people trying to do a thing. That's that's what, where I'm at with that one. I think that they are they are quite similar, and I think if you liked one, you might like the other. My other big epic fantasy that I always recommend is Chorus of Dragons. This is the second book. Um, in this case, I think, not sure why I'm recommending this. Let me try and think that through. What was past Judith thinking? I think it was the idea of bringing in different characters in every single book. That was what, what struck a chord with me there, that idea of increasing the scope of the story by increasing the characters that you care about. That'll do for that one. And lastly, I talk about this one quite a lot when we're talking about cities, but Jade City by Fonda Lee, uh, followed by Jade War, and soon to be Jade Legacy. And um, I am rereading these in the next couple of weeks. I think it's week after next I start that reread and I will have a video up for the whole trilogy, which I'm very excited about. Uh, but yeah, if you like books where the city feels like it's character of its own, Jade City is the one for you. My final verdict on this, were I the bookish judge, I really think they're well worth reading. I very much enjoyed them. I can completely understand people who would like to wait until books four and five come out and see kind of what the, what the full story is. For me, as I say, each one of them ends enough that I'm quite happy to just keep reading them as each one comes out. 
even if that means waiting around for another couple of years to talk about the end of this trilogy. So, end of this trilogy? End of this series. That's the word I'm looking for. I think I'm gonna have to go and give a dog a good fussin because she looks like she needs some attention. So I will sign off now. Have you read these? Uh, do you have any extra thoughts on fantasy series with really great city settings? I would like to know them, please and thank you. Pop them in the comments below. What are your thoughts on picking up a unfinished series? Are you a kind of person who will leap in and do it? Do you prefer to wait until we've got at least like publishing dates for the whole series? What are your thoughts? Let me know. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated and there's a heck ton more content coming your way. You can also follow me on social media, come hang out on Discord. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Black Iron Legacy. Yes, I always say Black Iron Gods. And there's a bookmark in here. It is, Fate is Strong but Love is Stronger by Ellie Bronte. How nice. Hello. I'm trying to film a video. Hello. No, that's my coffee. Hey, you gonna go to your bed? No, I shall not go to my bed. I shall be a pain instead. <laughs> what I will also say is that, well, what was I gonna say? My last thing is, um, what am I like? Apparently it's stretching time. Right, I've got to film Animorphs next, so I've got to get my game face on.